So in this segment, we're going to be talking about EU chief dismisses idea the protocol, or shall I say the Windsor framework, is the UK taking back control. So this was a bit of an unfortunate leak, I think, but I don't think it will matter too much in the grand scheme of things. So the EU's chief negotiator has poured cold water on any notion that Sunak's Windsor framework deal represents the UK, quote, taking back control, end quote, from Brussels when it comes to Northern Ireland affairs. European Commission President Mara Sefcovic also said the deal was designed simply to avoid negative headlines in the British press, according to a recording obtained by The Telegraph. Um, The recording of Mr Sefcovic debriefing members of European Parliament's Brexit committee on the deal. So this is meant to be uh, a private meeting, but the details got out. Be interesting to see if the person who briefed the media has a particular angle, given how sensitive the talks are around the protocol. I mean, it's still in draft form. The Tories have to sell it to the DUP. The European Commission have to sell it to uh, member states and the MEPs. So whatever Sunak says in public about the deal, the European Commission might get pulled up on it. So both sides have to be careful here. But I haven't seen a broader conversation in the media around this. But then again, Gary Lineker has taken all the oxygen out um, and the Tories have kind of used him in the culture war, which is unfortunate. Sefcovic also dismissed any idea that the Stormont break in the deal gives the UK an effective veto over any um, new EU uh, any any new EU law that uh, would affect Northern Ireland. Quote: The Stormont break is very much limited in the scope, and it's really under very strict conditions. End quote. The diplomat told the committee. He goes on to say, quote, on top of that, if we do not feel convinced we have our joint bodies to deal with this issue, or eventually this case could be presented to the arbitration, if we don't feel the third party's perspective, we ha- we will have the possibility to take limited remedial measures because we can tell them it's affecting the function of our single market, end quote. And I have, I have an issue with that last paragraph. If the uh, handbrake is used, you know, however you want to define it, and the arbitration panel rules it is justified, the you know Northern Ireland use of it and Britain's use of it is justified. The EU were supposedly meant to try and resolve the issue. The optics were meant to be that Stormont were meant to have more say on EU rules impacting Northern Ireland. The break implies a stop or delay to EU rules potentially. It has to go through a whole process. But if he's arguing that the EU will overrule the arbitration panels and stick on potential tariffs um, onto goods going from GB to NI, or possibly GB to the re- to the EU, then that's not a great deal, and it makes the break, you know, the Stormont break pointless, which I get is mainly there for optics, but for him to say this so bluntly, it's just more ammo for the DUP and the ERG. I get that this was meant to be a private meeting, perhaps he felt he had to portray the break in this way in order to sell the deal, but I have reservations about this. The European Commission Vice President also claimed the European Court of Justice still oversees swathes of EU rules that continue to apply Northern Ireland, an arrangement that has angered unionists. Be under no impression that there will be a diminishing of the rule of the European Court of Justice. We've been very clear from the beginning until the end. The role of the European Court of Justice as the sole and final arbiter of EU law stays in place, end quote. And that's fine. If there are any disputes on things like implementation on EU rules, then it would go to the European Court of Justice. From what I've read, the use of the break would go to arbitration instead of going to the European Court of Justice. But keeping the ECJ is fine. I think that um, they may have added more legal kind of layers, but ultimately the ECJ is the ultimate arbitrator, arbitrator in most um, in, in most disputes. Sefcovic added that the Windsor framework was designed to prevent future disputes over EU rules in Northern Ireland from reaching a, quote, level that would generate political headlines, end quote. I think this is mainly to put pressure on the DUP to tell them, look at this shiny new deal we have. Um, It also gives Stormont the power to block EU rules, but um, you have to be in Stormont to use them. So if you're against the EU rules, you're going to have to go back to Stormont. Surprise, surprise. So it means the DUP have to take up their seats and it kind of resolves a lot of the tensions in Northern Ireland inherently just by the DUP going back to Stormont. Northern Ireland uh, Secretary Chris Heaton-Harris has said with the framework the UK is quote decisively taking back control in a host of areas from Brussels. It ensures unfettered access for Northern Ireland made goods to the whole of the UK market to the whole UK market, restores the balance of the Belfast Good Friday Agreement provide Stormont with the opportunity to reject the application of any harmful new EU rules in the future in which areas they remain, end quote. And this is what I mean. This looks like it's at odds what Sefcovic said earlier. 
Who defines bills that cause harm? What happens if the powers are used properly and the EU disagrees with the use of the break? What happens at that point? I'm sure the DUP and the ERG are asking the same questions of their lawyers. DUP leader Donaldson has said his party will be receiving legal advice over the Windsor framework and analysing whether it meets the DUP 7 tests for um, new Northern Ireland protocol arrangements that would pave the way for the party to re-enter the executive. Speaking on GB News on Sunday, Jeffrey was asked about Sefcovic's comments. The DUP leader said it had been clear that it had been a, quote, lot of spin, end quote, from both the UK and the EU over the deal and feels that Sefcovic is trying to play down some aspects of the framework as the European Commission is concerned about, quote, setting a precedent, end quote, that other EU members could follow. Donaldson added that he is waiting to see what additional legislation is laid before Parliament and what amendments to the framework are possible because it is still in the draft form. Setting a precedent about what? It feels like there's missing context here. You know, maybe he feels member states or EFTA countries could start re- trying to reject EU laws using the kind of Windsor kind of framework as a precedent saying, why is it okay for Northern Ireland to veto, to block or delay EU rules being implemented, but not us? Um, that could be what the European Commission could fear. Um, but again, I'm not sure about that one. It's a bit of a weird statement Donaldson made. Perhaps the EFTA countries could complain, but I doubt they will, given how difficult it would be um, to kind of renegotiate the agreement between EFTA and the EU, and obviously the relative size between EFTA and the EU as well. With Donaldson, I think he's waiting for the final draft that will go through the EU and Westminster, um, trying to get possible concessions where possible. Uh, So it makes sense. And, you know, this is why Donaldson's seen as more of a pragmatist um, versus kind of Sammy Wilson and um, Ian Paisley. So, yeah, it's interesting um, statements. Both sides kind of trying to spin this as a win. It's a bit dangerous, though, when stuff gets leaked. That's meant to be in private meetings. And that's something I think perhaps the EU have to be a bit more wary that, you know, there are obviously still people briefing the media within, um, you know, the ones that are within the meeting. So that's something they should be wary of. But then again, some leaks are, some things are designed to get out to the broader public. So it's a game and it's very hard to know what exactly they want to be out in public and what they don't. But anyways, I'm going to leave it there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe, support the channel on Patreon if you can, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.